Good morning from Hamburg, Germany, and welcome back to the Daily Photography Vlogs. Today it is like just after 6 a.m. in the morning, and this is a quick tutorial on how to get a good photograph of light trails. All starts right now. Let's go. <laughs> We're set up here behind me and you can see these two towers in the background. Those are called the dancing towers here in Hamburg and that's going to be sort of the subject to our image here this morning. But to get some interest into this scene, we want to have light trails kind of going across the frame on the opposite angle to the towers. So that's sort of the whole idea behind this image. My first two tips for you for light trail photography is to make sure that you have a tripod or some way of stabilizing your camera. And the second one is to shoot in a dark scene. So you want to darken up the frame because in order to do a long exposure, you have to open up your shutter to allow the light to come through. So when it's really dark, you need to have your shutter open for like at least a second or longer to be able to let that light pass through the frame and in order you to get those light trails. So the first thing is to stabilize your camera and the second thing is to shoot at night or at least a dark scene where you can create a long exposure. Next tip with light trail photography, especially if you're doing it of car lights, is to focus on the brake lights, not on the headlights. The brake lights are less bright and therefore they don't have a chance of overexposing your scene or making it just too hard to see what's going on. So most of the best light trail photography you'll see is of red lights, of the brake lights going through the scene. So that's that's something to focus on when you're doing this, is the, uh, the car is moving away from you, not towards you. Our next tip here with light trails is to get low. I know it's kind of awkward, but think of it as like trying to get the eye level aligned with the light trails, if that makes sense. Also, what I'm waiting for is a bus. A bus is high enough, it's kind of like a double decker in a way, that if you're low and a bus crosses your frame, you'll get those light trails at the brake lights and also at the top of the bus. So you'll get like a mix of yellow, orange, white, and red in a much bigger block going across your composition which looks really really good it's much better than just like say car brake lights which are really low right along the ground so in order to kind of emphasize that difference you want to get low and shoot kind of up it's the same idea with wildlife if you've ever seen that before if you're shooting wildlife you almost always want to try and get to the same eye level as the wildlife which could mean getting right down onto the ground but it does make a much more powerful result for the viewer and I think I think I got our first shot. So blue hour is officially upon us now and this is what I've been waiting for. In this scene in particular, you really want a bus to go through the scene on your side of the street directly in front of the camera. So my camera is just down here. The bus is right here on the corner and as soon as that light goes green, it's gonna cross right now. Two second timer, boom. Maybe a little too long in six seconds, but <clears throat> there's another bus, nice. Yeah, very cool. I think we just got the shot.
we left the street because it's hectic, crazy. In a much more normal, quiet environment here. Beautiful city park in Hamburg, Germany. Today's a bit overcast. We've had, honestly, like great weather for the last 23 days of the vlog. So it was the day 22 yesterday, I couldn't remember, but today is day 23. And that is a quick light trails tutorial for you. So I know a lot of you guys watching this are photographers and you've most likely done long exposure and light trail photography before, but it doesn't hurt to uh, see, you know, a couple of other ideas from uh, fellow photographers because I am a firm believer that you learn more from other photographers uh, quicker than you would on your own. So it's good to share these tips and information and maybe the only one you didn't know is to try and get low. You know, getting low at the same eye level of, of your subject uh, is really powerful in photography. And I believe that with light trails, if you're on about the same level as the brake lights of a car or a bus or a vehicle, that can create a really, really nice effect to your long exposure scene. So I'm pretty happy with the results. And just to reiterate a couple things that I wanted to talk about in this video is you need a tripod or some way to stabilize your camera. It needs to be a dark scene so that you can open up your shutter to get a long exposure. If it isn't dark, you can use ND filters, which are neutral density filters, which are essentially like sunglasses for your lens. And that allows you to get a longer exposure when it's brighter weather outside. And then get low, which I just mentioned, and then use the tail lights or the brake lights of the vehicles, not the headlights because the brake lights are far less bright and less overexposed and they create a really nice dynamic. That red color usually looks really good in light trail photography. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the daily vlog. Good morning, wherever you are. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional tips on light tra trail photography and uh, thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Ah. Uh.